Eating for muscle hypertrophy basically comes down to two important items. Number one, you have to be in caloric surplus. I've seen a lot of people make a major mistake when they do this. They think, I wanna grow muscle, I have to eat more, and so they dramatically increase the caloric intake. I'm talking double, maybe even triple the amount of calories they normally eat. Well, yes, this helps, but I don't think it helps most people get the goal they're really truly after. See, most of us, when we say we wanna grow muscle, we mean we want to grow lean muscle. In other words, we want to add muscle, but we don't want to add a lot of extra fat. So if your goal is to just optimize muscle growth, then yes, you need to be maybe 20, 50, maybe 60% caloric surplus. But a lot of that muscle is going to come with a lot of unnecessary fat. I guess if you're trying to compete and maximize muscle growth and bodybuilding or something, and you're going to go through a phase where you get as big as possible and then you cut a lot of fat down, fine. But for most people who want to gain mostly lean mass, say you want to gain 10 pounds of muscle, well, you can't gain 10 pounds of muscle and no fat, but you want to gain 10 pounds of muscle and you'd be like, cool, with one extra pound of fat or two extra pounds. Well, the, re the research we have now suggests that you only want to be in about a 10 to 15% caloric surplus. Now, if you're a beginner, you might be able to go up to like 20%, but that's really about it. I know some folks like Eric Helms and others are doing some, some more research in this, because we don't exactly, this is not 100% set, but this is what we understand as of now. So if you have normally 2,000 calories, and that just keeps you at the same body weight, as well as same amount of leanness, then you need to go up to like 220, maybe 200, or 2,000, 2,200, 2,300. That's it, it's one extra meal, right? You don't need to add an extra 1,000. If you do that again, a higher percentage of your increase in size will come from fat than you probably want. So you probably can get that by just boosting up your, your carbohydrate or your fat, depending on where you specifically lie. These are general numbers people hit in terms of amount of carbohydrate and fat. I don't really care which one you boost up, as long as you're at kind of these minimum thresholds. And there's a lot of wiggle room here. These ones aren't, in my opinion, as critical. The second big thing you have to get is the protein, okay? So if you take your normal diet and you make sure that you're having a minimum amount of protein, maybe scooch it up a little bit, Maybe push the, pro the carbohydrates and fat up, but don't go up too high. Okay, what you, you can survive having a little bit lower carbohydrate and a little bit lower fat, but you can't survive low protein for the most part if you're trying to maximize the muscle growth. So here are some numbers to, to aim for. Having said that, there's been a lot of research, again, at this like three, uh, even four grams per kilogram body weight, suggesting that it really is helpful at adding lean tissue. So I don't think there's any reason to to really want to be much below this two grams per kilogram body weight, which is effectively one gram per pound. In my opinion, that's the low end of the recommendation. Get at least there, if not higher. And I see really no reason if you're trying to really get lean and grow muscle, rather, to not be at you know, two and a half, maybe even three grams per kilogram. Okay, within that, then you have to make sure you're getting around 0.4 grams of high quality protein per feeding. Now, the research would suggest you could be a little bit lower, but I think there's no reason to go below this 0.4 grams. This would then translate into something like 20 to 50 grams of feeding, uh, grams of protein per feeding. Now, HQ stands for high quality. This means a complete protein. Uh, this is not peanut butter. This is not broccoli. This is Google complete protein. You need them all there because you need the essential amino acids. Those are what drive muscle hypertrophy, and you specifically need leucine. And you want somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to 300 milligrams of leucine per feeding. And you also want to combine that with other, the other essential amino acids. So if you eat most of your protein coming from whole foods, you're going to get almost all these boxes checked. If you want to add some supplemental protein powders, things like that, on the outside, just fine. If you are eating a lot uh, or like a lot of plant-based proteins or a small percentage of animal proteins, then you probably need to bump these, num these numbers up even higher because you're going to have a more difficult time getting that leucine threshold. Okay, now we still have a bunch of unresolved questions like timing and feeding numbers. So do you have to eat six, seven, eight meals a day? I don't think so. As long as you can get your numbers with three meals, I think you're just fine. What about one to two meals? I don't know. I guess it's possible if you hit the numbers. My gut is it won't be the same for most people. I think you need to get at least three separate feedings because of how transient protein is. But we don't know, right? Research is open on that topic. In terms of the timing, I've already covered this in a 25-minute fizz video. So you'd have to go back to this. But 
I mean, actually think I have a five minute as well. I can't remember. All right, the post-exercise anabolic window, like I was just saying, it doesn't necessarily matter that you have the protein directly after your, your workout, as long as you have it in the system. But again, you want more detail on that, go check that video out. I would, lastly, I would recommend that you read this article by Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld. Um, this is through the NSCA Strength and Conditioning Journal. It's a fantastic, very practitioner-based. It's not original research. There's not stats and methods and stuff like that. It's just what do we know scientifically uh, about nutrition for maximizing body composition. So in and out in, uh, you know, five-ish minutes or so. If you really like this and this was your jam, I would strongly encourage you to check out my big, long, three-part series on the physiology, the stimuli, and especially if you just want the practical stuff, part three where I cover over an hour of exactly what to eat, how to train, volume, intensity, frequency, negatives, eccentrics, all that stuff in that video. All right, we'll see you there.